And I am the product specialist for Imagineer Systems and Boris Effects. And since this is more of an editorial group, we're actually going to gear this towards editors as opposed to visual effects artists, which is good. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to show you some of the new tools that are available inside of the BCC 10 tools, and those tools include Mocha. And we're going to talk a little bit about where Mocha is going. And if we, uh, if we have time, we're going to also go over the Mocha Pro stuff and show a remove in that and talk about some things that we can do for beauty and cleanup there as well, which will interest you. And um, so let's get started. So as some of you may know, uh, we got bought by, um, Imagineer Systems got bought by a company called Boris Effects about a year ago. And what that means is that Boris Effects is like an open effects tool maker. You know, they make things for Avid. You know, that's where you probably know them from. Um, but they make things also for After Effects and Premiere and all, all of those other programs, Resolve, et cetera, Final Cut. Um, and the cool thing about that is that means that we get to bring their experience with those tools to Mocha and Mocha to their tools. So with that in mind, what we've done is we've actually included Mocha inside of their Pixel Chooser. So for those of you that don't know, the Pixel Chooser is actually Boris Effects' answer to uh, like a color key, it's like masking. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add Mocha splines to that to make a really more powerful solution. So for one of the things I'm gonna show you tonight is how we can use that for masking. And we're gonna cover like really quickly how masking works. So if I want to say witness protect these two people here in the crowd, this is a very common editing task. You need to blur out a license plate, a witness protection, all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, that's kind of a pain with a lot of features. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create these blurs very, very quickly. So I'm going to select my clip and we're going to jump over to our effects browser. And I'm just gonna scooch this over because uh, I've lost some real estate here. And we're gonna go to effects and we're going to do like a Gaussian blur. And we're gonna pick BCC Gaussian blur, okay? These are the BCC 10 tools. And we're gonna drag this right onto our clip. Once we have dragged this onto our clip, you see we have all sorts of options, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase our horizontal blur, and you can see that that's applied to the whole image. Oh, we're having troubles with lights? Okay, we're gonna move on from that. House lights down. Sorry. House lights down, please. Okay, yay, we fixed it. Okay, can everybody see now? Are we, yes, we're sufficiently happy, wonderful. Um, all right, no worries. Um, I just saw this motion in the, was like, I know the we're making sure that, yeah, work. use your words. Um, all right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're going to select our, our objects that we wanna track. In this case, we wanna track this lady's face and this man's face to witness protection them. Now, Mocha is a planar tracker. What in the world is that? Okay, sounds like a buzzword. Well, it's not a buzzword. What it means is, is in programmer speak, we're tracking a pattern of pixels as it moves relative to one another through space. But what we're actually doing is we're actually tracking a pattern of um, a texture, okay? And we're following that texture in a planar way through the scene. And this is more powerful than things like point tracking and feature tracking because it means that we can track through blurs, we can track through whip pans, we can track through like uh, the, the rack focus issues. And that's because we're actually looking at the whole texture. So we take our X spline, we have Bezier's right here if you want to use them. I don't recommend you do because you have to deal with two handlebars and that's a pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my X splines and I'm gonna draw a shape right around our guy, just like this. And then I'm going to take another shape and I'm gonna draw it right around our lady, just like this. And you can track from any point in the timeline. You notice I'm tracking from the end to the beginning. The reason that I'm tracking from the end to the beginning is because Mocha, because it's a planar tracker and because of the way it works, it actually needs the most information you can give it first, and then it compares all other information it gets to that most information. But that's not to say it doesn't adapt, because what it actually does is it tracks from frame you know, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and it adjusts what it's looking for based on the changes that are made in a 3D way, and then it converts that into 2D data, and then we end up with this lovely track. So we're gonna go ahead and track both of these backwards, just like this. And what you'll see is they're followed right through the scene, even though they overlap. No problem, super fast, all right? Now, because that's really fast, we can just go ahead and save it, and because it's part of the plugin, it's actually, just as soon as we save it and close it, it's applied to our shot, which is really handy. Okay, and then we can go into our pixel chooser and we can start to adjust things like our mat, for example, um, or we can come in here and we can adjust our mask and in our mask, we can start to increase our feather just to make it blend nicely. 
and then very, very quickly, we have masked out our objects, okay? You can use this for color corrections. You can use this for, you know, um, any sort of masking that you need to do. You can also use this for basic compositing inside of Premiere. So let's say you have a logo on a sign or something that you need to replace. You can actually put a Mocha track on top of that. You can use the BCC Pixel Chooser, which is in this RFX here. If we come here to Pixel Chooser, you can see that we actually have a BCC Pixel Chooser on its own and we can actually save that file. The other cool thing about this is that we can share these files across our projects. So if I have this shot, and I know I've tracked this shot, I can go to File, Export Project, and I can actually export my Mocha file, okay? And the cool thing about this too is if you have any standalone Mocha projects, you can actually load them into here. So if you have an editor assistant or someone that's doing your Roto for you, which ideally you do because Roto is awful, um, if you have an editor assistant, what you can do is you can have them do the roto, save the file, and then you load it back into here. It's just a great way to save yourself time. And again, there's all sorts of tasks that you can do with this. Now, moving right along, what we can also do is we can uh, use this data for tracks. So in this case, we have this guy, and he's punching a punching bag, right? But we want to add more drama to this shot. We want to like increase the lighting. We want to make this look a little bit more dramatic. Like maybe, maybe we're making this for a promo. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add this light. Now, in order to add this light to our shot, what we have to do is we actually have to do a very simple track. And you can see we have our track here. So in order to do that, what I have to do is I have to come into Mocha. And in this case, what we've done is we've made a holdout for our shape here, just with a simple track, and we've tracked our back wall. Now, if we want to export this data, what we do is we actually have this surface tool. This surface tool can move completely along with our track. And here's an important thing to realize inside of Mocha. Everything in Mocha is a child of the track. And this is the hardest thing to wrap your head about uh, in Mocha. And as soon as you get this concept, you will be a master at Mocha. And that is, the track is completely independent of the shape. The shape is only where Mocha is looking to track, okay? So you're drawing your shape around your object, the track moves independently, and as long as you are looking at an object that is on the same plane, Mocha will continue that track through. So that, you notice this shape is all the way over here, and my track is all the way over here. I can move this track anywhere. So I can move this track down, I can come in here and zoom out, for example, and it moves along with my track no matter what it's doing, okay? So from here what we can do is we can align our object exactly where we want it, now in this case, what we're doing is we want to actually have our center point be our transform data that we're gonna use inside of the BCC tools. So what we do is we move our surface tool where we want our light, okay? And that's really important, all right? Now we take this and we go to export tracking data. Inside of export tracking data, we're gonna take our BCC center point and we're gonna save it. In this case, I'm gonna save it right to my desktop because I'm a sloppy mess and this is a demo. Um, and we're gonna call this test BCC, okay? Now, obviously, you're gonna want to actually do some file management. Don't copy me and save to your desktop ever, ever. So, ever. All right, so <laughs> now, let's go ahead and save this and close it. And what we can do is we can start to apply it to this shot, right? So we have our, so let's come over here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our effects and we're gonna do puffy. So what we're gonna type into search because we're doing a BCC raise puffy, okay? We're gonna click on this and we're gonna drag it right onto our effect. I mean, right onto our um, clip and that's gonna be our effect. Now what you'll notice is this comes in with a default look. Well, here's the cool thing about the BCC t uh, tools, especially the nine and 10 tools, they come with this thing called the effects browser. And the effects browser allows you in real time to play and scroll through the effects that you want to use, okay? So in this case, we want intense original colors, okay? But this is a really good place for you to start when you're building your looks, because a lot of times when you're in an edit, you don't have time to stop and go, what does this slider do? What does that slider do? You know, how does this look? Do I want to build my look? So we have a, bu a bunch of these looks that you can build on and alter them. Of course, you never really want to do exactly what the default is, because that's boring. But you, this gives you a good starting place. So we're going to go ahead and use intense original colors, and we're going to hit apply. Okay, and now that's applied to our shot. But you notice we're still coming from the middle of the screen. Now what we can do is we can actually move our light source manually, okay, and you can see that this is actually doing some really cool 3D calculations to get some nice volumetric lights, which is really nice. But we don't actually want to do that. 
What we want to do instead is we want to use our tracking data because we want this to actually move with the camera and look realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to our motion tracker. And in our motion tracker, we're going to hit load. Inside of load, we're going to navigate to our data. Okay. And now we're going to apply this. So we have to apply this to the light source. And now this moves perfectly along with our shot. And we end up with a very, very basic and easy track. Now, you'll notice too that like we only tracked this section over here to get this data over here. The cool thing about that is what was I talking about earlier, wherein Mocha does not need a ton of really complex or hard edge data. In fact, even your skin is enough data for Mocha to track. What's not enough texture for Mocha to track is something that's totally blown out um, in either the white or the black. If there's no texture at all, of course, Mocha is not going to be able to handle that. But things like uh, painting dots on your talent's face so that you can track their face is only making more work for yourself, okay? Because Mocha should be able to handle it based on whether or not you have actually texture to your skin. Um, so that is Mocha. Now, I do want to point out that Ross Shane, our CMO, and JP Smith, our CEO, are actually here tonight. So if you have any specific tech questions that you want to pick their brains about, they're sitting right back there, and I told them I would call them out. And there they are. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> JP is here from the UK, and Ross Shane is here from New York, so you're not often going to get to see them. Obviously, I am your local product specialist, so you can bug me anytime. I live in the valley. Um, Rosita. Rosita. Um, there's a song about that, I think, about Rosita. Anyway, I live there, um, so I'm always available here to answer questions, so make sure that you ask those sorts of questions about that. So that's Mocha um, inside of the Pixel Chooser, but I kind of want to move on and talk a little bit about some of the BCC tools as well. And please let me know if I'm starting to run over time, because I know I tend to uh, ramble on. Wonderful. So we're going to talk now about some of the other tools inside the BCC tool set. So let's go to our project, and let's talk about light leaks. So, one of the new features that we have inside of the BCC 10 tools are light leaks. So what is that? Light leaks are actually something that you use to take normal boring footage, all right, and dress it up. So in this case, we've got these promos. Let me just go ahead and turn all of these off. Let's turn that off, turn this off, and that one. And you can see that this is really dark footage, and it's, a, it's sort of like a, you know, it's a uh, MMA promo, okay? Now, this is all fine and good, but this is just not flashy enough to grab attention on television. So what we want to do is we want to make this look like a much bigger deal. So we're going to go ahead and add light leaks to it. So in this case, what we can do is we can come turn our light leaks on. What we're actually doing is we're generating a resolution-independent fractal noise light pattern over the top of this that we can colorize with like four different emitters to put over our darks and make everything pop a little bit nicer. Now, please forgive the color projection. That's just the way it's going to be, but we're going to work with what we've got. Now, you can also build all kinds of looks with these. So you can see we've got some blues. We've got some flashing lights. It makes it look like there's photography happening, okay? Um, especially if you've got like fashion shoots where like one of your shots, your model is, you know, being shot all the way down, but as she's leaving the runway, there's not a lot of photograph um, lights and you want to match it. This is a good way to match that. Now, you can also do things like add warm tones. Um, but what these look best as is these look best as larger areas of data. You can adjust the size. So if we come in here to our generator, okay, and we've got enable generator. And on our first generator, you can see that we've got all sorts of parameters inside of here. Well, we can change the position of this, okay? So this is very, this is very stylable. We can change the irritation of it. We can start to change the scale, okay? And the scale is important because the smaller you get with your scale, actually, the more like noise this looks and the less like lights it looks. So you need to make sure that your scale is going to be appropriate to what you're working for. But because this is resolution independent, this will work in 1K, 2K, 4K, 6K etc. Anything that your editor can handle, this can handle because it's all generated procedurally, which is really nice. So this is new inside of the BCC 10 tools. Um, now, moving right along, let's talk about some of the new filters inside of the BCC 10 tools. One of the new fil filters is the glitch filter. Okay, And what glitch actually does is glitch can create the look of uh, signal loss, it's of compression, um, and it can also be used in transitions, and I'll get to that later. But what it does is it gives you the ability to add some motion to your shot if you've got some kind of boring static shots that you want to punch up. Now, again, this has an effects browser as well, so you can start to scroll through everything, see how it looks, okay, and adjust your look that way. 
But again, you can come in here and you can start to mess with your parameters to get more of a solution here. What's important here though is that you can adjust things like the flicker, but the coolest thing about the BCC filters is that a lot of them actually have beat reactors. So if you've got a, um, a song in your background, what you can do is you can use that same WAV file and you can just load it right in here into the beat reactor and you can actually get it to move along with your shot. And that's really, really handy for those of you that are trying to cut to music. And that's actually available inside of all the BCC, uh, well not all of them, but most of the BCC 10 filters. So um, that's really awesome. Um, I, I, I like to hear the murmurings of, yeah, you know? Yeah, I can show an example. Yeah, I can actually, yeah, sure. Um, let's go back to our glitch transitions. Yeah, you can, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a setting, you load it in. So if you go down here to enable beat reactor, right, yeah. And then you come down here into the beat reactor, right? And what you can do, cancel. And what you can do is inside of, the, inside of the beat reactor, you simply load your file. So in this case, let's find like a wave file. Um, I have it inside of, let's go to. Can't, can't match the timeline it's already you can, it won't match the timeline, but what you can do is if, you're, if that really bugs you, you can render out your timeline as a wave and load it back in. Like that is a, that's a secondary step that kind of sucks, but it's something that you can absolutely do. So um, now it will not dynamically cut to the, the music on your timeline. Um, ideally, that's, ideally, that's a wish list thing. <laughs> Do what? Uh, not, yet. not yet. Well, yeah, ideally. So, uh, and, and that's the cool thing about working with us. You know, we're, um, we're, we really listen to our users. So, you know, if you have like a thing that you really want to see, um, you guys are not going to remember this, but my, my email is maryp at imaginarysystems.com and email me with your feature requests and stuff and I'll pass them on to the people who need to hear them. We listen to you. We care. So if you have something that you really want to see, let us know and we'll push it towards what we can do. Now I can't promise that it'll happen, okay, but I can promise that if you fuss enough um, <laughs> that we will, we will listen to you. Um, now, so moving right along, let's talk a little bit about transitions. So uh, the thing about transitions, <laughs> I mean squeaky wheels get the grease as they say. Um, you know, just be polite because we're people. So, <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, uh, other transitions that we have, and so the new transitions that we have inside the BCC 10 tools are things like a light leaks transition. Okay, and the cool thing about that is you can just use these to fade between shots. Um, I already showed you sort of the light leaks, but what I like about the BCC tools, and this is important, I'm gonna come in here and select this. this. In our effects tool, what you can do is you can actually turn on your heads up display. Okay, and inside of your heads up display, you can actually start to, um, to access some of the stuff inside of your BCC tools. So let's come in here and let's hit our heads up display. Apparently we're just gonna have a video card problem today. Looks like we're having a video prop problem today. Anyway, thing is it's supposed to pop up a heads up display, but apparently it's not working when we're, when we're hooked up externally. That happens. Bug find, yay. All right, so moving right along. Um, it's absolutely, yeah. No, it's, you know what? It's not a bug, it's a feature, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, undocumented feature. I like it. We're, we're gonna call that that forever. This is an undocumented feature. new projector. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, the projector's a problem, but whatever. We're gonna, we're, you know what? We're gonna roll with it. It's totally okay. Um, all right, so the other, um, so we can just use a BCC uh, light leaks filter um, that's, a, that's a transition on these sorts of shots. And what's cool about that is it has all of the controls that we have inside of light leaks, but it also allows you to change the animation. You know, you can change the percentage, you can change the geometry as well, and you can also stylize it. And again, this also has the effects browser where you can see we have many, many, many more options because these are transitions. And of course, one thing editors need in their toolbox is transitions. And you can see too that we have so many for you. In fact, the Boris effects tools, we have hundreds of filters and we have thousands of presets, okay? So we give you a lot of options. Now, moving right along, let's talk about some of the new filters. We have this new transition that is called cross melt. And the cool thing about that is what this does is this actually creates a really nice sort of fractal melt over the top of everything. It's really pretty, right? You can use this for all sorts of fun stuff. Um, the cool thing about this is you can actually adjust the displacement. You can design everything right here. So, you know, if we want to adjust the displacement, we can. Let's, I'm sorry, select here. If we want to adjust the displacement, we can, right? If we want to adjust the light intensity, we can do that really easily, okay? 
We can adjust the ambient intensity, to basically how bright the shot's gonna be through this. Um, we can start to boost the brightness. You can design all of these and all of these parameters are animatable. So the cool thing about this too, and I really wanna point this out with the BCC tools, is that you can actually load and save presets and that's awesome. So if I, if I really like this, this adjustment that I've made, I can come over here and I can go to save and I can save this as a preset anywhere. Now once I save that, I can actually share this with After Effects users, Premiere users, Avid users, anybody that has BCC tools can read this. So it's cross-platform presets, rad, okay? So that really allows you to collaborate with other users. It also allows you, um, if you're an editor and you're not so much into design, it allows you to pass this stuff off to designers so that you can actually focus on your edit and then they can focus on the art and they kick this to you. So, or if you're an artist, you know, obviously you can focus on this. So um, now, moving right along, let's talk about the, we have a glitch transition as well. Again, kind of self-explanatory, but what I want to point out here again is that we have a lot of looks for this and you can start to adjust really how these talk to one another very, very quickly. Now, let's cancel that because you've already seen it. Moving right along, we have one more new transition and that is the cross zoom. And cross zoom actually allows you to get kind of like a Ken Burnsy blends on moving footage, okay? And it's really nice. And again, we also have tons of presets for that as well. So you can come in here, select your, excuse me, select your filter, effects browser, come in here, and you can really start to see what the possibilities are really quickly without having to set that up yourself. Or you can come in here and you can actually start to adjust the zooms and off offsets manually. So that's a lot of fun. Um, now, another thing I do want to point out is that all of the BCC tools have this thing called the help button. And I, I, I want to say that this is like an obvious thing, but honestly, it's not necessarily always obvious. You click on this, what it does is it loads up the online uh, documentation that we have for this. It walks through every single parameter in here. Never feel like you're lost. You're not lost. You have a roadmap, and your roadmap is right here. Okay? So there you go. Now, Moving right along, let's talk about, I say moving right along a lot. Um, let's go to Reframer. So what is Reframer? Uh, Reframer is actually this thing that has to deal with, um, who in here loves vertical video? Who loves vertical video? It's the best, we love it. Um, so vertical video syndrome, it's a huge problem, okay? Because uh, people just, for some reason, just can't turn their camera sideways. It's like they think we watch movies in vertical format, surely. Um, so. <laughs> So what we have is we have a solution for that. So what we do is we use this, um, the BCC reframer. And the cool thing about the BCC reframer is you put it on a new layer and what it does is it allows you, excuse me, let's turn this back on. It allows you to design a fort, this is my dog, I'm sorry. But um, so we had like a pretty girl on the waves but I wanted a new piece of footage. Um, so what we've got is we've got this, this video and we can assign a foreground and a background and then we can start to change the background parameters. So in this case, we can come over here and we can actually start to add pixelated backgrounds or we can start to turn other things on in the background. We can do BG glows, okay, to make this zoom a little nicer. Um, there's all sorts of effects that you can apply, including mosaics, tiles, glows, blurs, etc., in order to design this frame and make everybody focus here while still remaining um, not black bars because black bars look like garbage in the middle of your edit, okay? So that is the reframer. It's very, very easy to use. Um, basically what you do is you come in here to your foreground parameters. So we have our, you know, our foreground scales, okay? You can zoom this in or whatever you want to do, okay? And you can start to change the scale master, for example. And then in the back, the foreground transformations, you can start to change the foreground transformations, which is like, you know, how are we going to deal with this? Are we going to have this smaller? Are we going to have it larger and zoom in? You know, and how's that going to fit over our background? And then the background, we actually get into designing the background itself. So in this case, we have our background scale as well. So very, very easy to use. It's just a bunch of sliders, foreground, background, you're done. All right. The whole point of these tools is to give you speed in your edit. You don't want to have to sit there and try to design your effects over and over and over again. Um, and again, these can be preset and saved. So if you've got like, if you're doing a news broadcast, for example, you know, news is one of the main culprits for vertical video because they do a lot of sourced footage from, you know, eyewitness was on the scene with a cell phone and didn't know how to film. Um, so of course, you know, they get a lot of that. So you can preset, yeah, exactly. And, um, and so you can save this and then apply that to other pieces of footage. Um, now. That's sort of the, the BCC stuff. I kind of want to get into um, some of the other like cooler BCC stuff. 
uh, which is to say we have this tool called the remover, okay? Now the remover allows you to do cloning inside of your edit, okay? So you don't have to jump to a uh, compositing program in order to use this tool. So in this case, we're gonna get rid of this beautiful woman's mole. She's got a mole on her chin. The director has decided it's distracting because directors are that way. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to draw a shape around that and we're going to remove it just like this. And we're gonna use Mocha to do this actually and we're gonna use Mocha and BCC10 to do this. So I'm going to select my footage. I'm gonna come over here to my effect and I'm actually going to select Reframer. Inside of Reframer, we're gonna grab BCC Reframer, drag it and drop it right onto our footage. I'm sorry, not Reframer. We're, in, we're, on, we're on autopilot. Remover, okay, BCC Remover, and we're gonna drag it right there, boom. There we are. Now, so we have our BCC Remover. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go to Mocha, launch Mocha, and inside of Mocha, we're simply going to draw a shape right around her mole, just like this. It's really this easy, okay? I, mean, I know this is, gonna, this is gonna seem like a canned demo, but this is actually how easy this is, okay? And we're gonna actually just hit translation and we're gonna track forward. And it sat fast because we're actually just using translation, so we're only following a small uh, bit of data. We don't actually have to like calculate how it's warping in space or any of that stuff. And it's gonna follow the camera really, really nicely. What we can do is we can actually use the Uber key to make that shape just a little bit smaller. So let's come in here and let's just scale this down. And of course you can use the transform tool to manipulate your shapes inside of Mocha, no problem. Here's what the Uber key did though. It offset that animation for the entire frame, okay? Because that's what the Uber key does. For instance, if I wanted to come into the middle of the shot, select one of my points and pull it out. Let me just, for just for effect, I wanna show you what the Uber key does. So we come over here like that. And now again, it's out for the whole shot. So the Uber key is a ripple edit. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and hit save and close. Okay, and now we're gonna come into our removal method and we're gonna hit clone shape. Okay, just like that. We're gonna turn our HUD, HUD on, we have BCC remover, and we're gonna have our offset because this is a shape replace, okay? So now that my on-screen tools are here, I can just simply drag this over and let's drag it over until it looks right. How about there? Let's see. So we have this nice, Shape, we come here to our pixel chooser under our mat and our mask. We're gonna go to feather, just a little bit. And now her mole is gone for the entirety of the shot, okay? And it's not just little stuff like that. You can actually use it for larger stuff as well. Like let's say I need to get rid of the logo inside of this wall, okay? So this is the kind of stuff that editors run into all the time. You've got to get rid of a license plate, you've got to get rid of a sign, you've got to get rid of a brand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, you do the exact same thing. It's literally just a shape. So we come over here, remover, drag and drop, mocha, draw our shape, really, really fast. And then let's come here, track that forward. We're just gonna use translation because there's not a lot of shift happening, but if we were, we could just use translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. We can take our Uber key and we can actually adjust the, the shape a little bit if we don't like it. So, you know, obviously we want it to fill the entire shape. We can turn our, trans, our uh, thumbnails off if they're in the way. And what we can do is drag this out just like this. Drag, 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 just like this. And now we've got our lovely shape. We're gonna just hit this. And now you can see that it tracks the whole scene. We save it close it, again, we jump to clone shape. We can also use clone spots, but they don't track, so we're using clone shapes because they do track, okay? And in our, in our shape, we're just gonna come in here to our display, okay? And we're going to offset this. So in our clone, we're just going to offset this until it looks right. Let's just scroll this over. There we are. And you can see that we're actually getting her hat, okay, so what do we do about that? That's kind of a pain. How do we deal with that? Well, what we do is we actually increase the scale, just like this. Looks like we're still catching up though because I'm on a laptop, hold on. Come back, let's go to 1200, there we are. Okay, perfect, so we can scale that up, and then again, we can come down here to our mask, and inside of our pixel chooser mask, we can feather this, excuse me, and so now we have our patch over the top of our object really, really quickly. 
without having to do a ton of work. So this is very, very useful for a lot of things that you need to take out of your shots, okay? Now, another thing that I wanna talk about is beauty work. So beauty work is kind of, it's kind of one of those things you have to deal with now, isn't it? Like even as editors, you know, you're having more and more people come in and they're like, oh, oh you know, we just need to soften this actor's skin. That's not a big deal, right? Like no big deal. It's a huge deal, it's a total pain, okay? And um, any of you guys ever watch, um, have you ever watched The Expendables? like looking through a Vaseline lens, you know, like for the whole movie. Um, like they're all good looking guys, but they're all 70. So, you know, like what you gotta work with. So, huh? A little higher actually, so, uh, well. Look, Arnold looks good, but doesn't look that good. All right, so um, what we're gonna do. Yeah, well that was actually tons of beauty work. Yeah, yeah, he's, he, was, he was really open about that, which is good. Um, and so many actors aren't, um, you know, like nobody discusses Bruce Willis's waddle. Um, so, sorry Bruce. Um, all right, so we have this tool called Beauty Studio. And what does Beauty Studio do? Well, Beauty Studio actually is really neat. Um, what it'll do is it actually allows you to create, let's come over here and turn this off, allows you to soften skin. So I don't know if any of you have ever been filmed in 4K, and it's actually hard to see here, so I'm gonna really zoom in. Um, let's zoom in to like 200. All right, and move over here. Okay, so I don't know if any of you have ever been shot in 4K. I have, um, and I never, ever, ever, ever will do it again. It's terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, it's terrible for your self-esteem. Um, it's like, you're just like, nope, I don't look like that, nope. Um, but you do under a microscope. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually soften the skin because everybody's sort of used to, um, you know, the true blood look. You know, nobody's actually, in, you know, the, the magazine look. Nobody's like, yeah. Nobody's actually, you know, used to seeing uh, how people look um, in, in real life in film because they're so used to actors being like these, eth you know, ethereal, beautiful creatures. So to do that takes a lot of work and we've taken a lot of the work out of that. Um, so what we do is we use uh, Beauty Studio. And what Beauty Studio does is when we apply it, it actually does um, skin softening, skin glows, and it actually does it all based on the pixel chooser. And the pixel chooser is actually really cool. Um, what you can do is you can actually use the pixel chooser and you can key the various skin colors, okay? And you can use that as a mask, and it's actually a very intelligent mask um, that will avoid things like hair and eyebrows um, if they're a slightly different color. Now the problem is, of course, what do you do when you have um, a white, blonde, Nordic girl? Like, okay, that's, that's where Mocha comes into play, okay? Like that's where you're gonna come in here to Mocha and you're gonna launch it and you're gonna start, you know, doing things like drawing shapes like this, obviously, you know? Because unfortunately, while the pixel chooser is amazing, there are some things that the pixel chooser just can't do, which is to say the impossible. All right, it's, it's not like actually, it doesn't, it's not content aware. So, inside of the skin smoothing though, we have a lot of, um, a lot of options. So we can come in here to our pixel chooser, and we can come in here to our mat, and what we can do is we can actually start to change our smoothing amount. So we can either pre-smooth it, um, or we can come in here to the effects, like the master amount, we can increase the ma master amount of smooth into the realm of Barbie, which looks terrible. You never wanna do that. Okay, you always wanna have some blend with the original. So in this case, we're gonna take that back down to like 60. Yeah, maybe 80, okay? And we can adjust the smallest details. So we can adjust how much of the small details we're smoothing. We can also take it in the opposite direction for the grizzled Western look. Um, <laughs> you don't necessarily wanna do that unless you're working on a Clint Eastwood movie. In this case, go craggy. Um, all right, because it's, it's actually a smoothing and a sharpening uh, tool, so you, you have a lot of options here. But you can smooth the small details, you can smooth the medium details, you have access to the large details, and the large details, of course, being things like, you know, your shadows, okay? So you have a lot of control over controlling the look here, and again, you can always save this and load it for all of your sister shots so that you don't have to redesign this over and over and over again. You do your master shot, you save your presets, you load it into the rest of your footage, and you're done, okay? So that's the power of the Beauty Studio tool. But it doesn't just work on pretty white girls. Okay, no worries. It doesn't just work on pretty white girls, it also works on pretty black girls. Um, and it also works on uh, older older people as well. Yeah, no, so, so we have obviously quite a huge difference um, between these two images. 
based on smoothing without losing all the detail. The last thing I want to talk about right quick before I'm done is Title Studio. Title Studio is inside of the BCC 10 tools. Title Studio is a 3D text and Tyler, but also a 2D design text and Tyler. And what it does is it gives you access to things like your <laughs> openings, right? So you can generate your own screen openings. You can uh, use actual 3D models inside of um, instead of Premiere, inside of After Effects, et cetera, and it actually uh, renders in, um, in proper lights and proper 3D space with proper textures, okay, and real 3D particles. So you can actually deal with those. And you can even animate them. So of course you see there's an animated title on top of this. We also can do 3D animated lower thirds, right? So lower thirds and real 3D. And we can do things like 2D callouts, designed quickly and easily with animation. You can do things like designs, and you can do things like, you know, your your actual text design where you uh, have your words interact really nicely. So it's 2D and 3D. You can do things like crawls, title on um, your uh, your credit sequence, your titles, whatever you need to do. This is your one-stop shop for that. And again, most of the cool thing about this is you can actually take this and you can again into the effects browser where we literally have hundreds of presets of kinds of text that you can use to put your titles on. So, and you can always play these as well and see how these look. So in this case, you know, obviously we've got our 1098. Um, you know, we've got various different looks that you can get. We've got your, your burn-ins that you can put on to your footage. Um, we've got your call-outs that you can do to add to your footage. And we've got your, um, your, all of your lower thirds and titles that you would want. So.